Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Suited Shootist. And what I'm going to be talking about today is something that I wrote about uh, about a year ago, but I think that it would benefit from a kind of closer up uh, visual representation, and that is tuckable holsters. Uh, it's one of those things where there are a lot of manufacturers out there that I'm hoping are well intentioned and are trying to accommodate those of us that dress like this on a regular basis or at least uh, still want to carry when we're dressed like this without a traditional cover garment uh, but a lot of them fall short and I think it is primarily because they don't get what dressing like this actually is so their idea of discreet is a little bit different than those of us that live in this kind of space so that's what I'm going to be digging into. Uh, it, if you've been getting a lot of mileage out of the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Uh, you can also follow us over on the, uh, the Facebook page and the Facebook group, Bespoke Solutions. Uh, we've got a bunch of good conversations in there, kind of in this same arena of balancing a concealed carry lifestyle with kind of presenting yourself and, and dressing better. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of great stuff going on in there. I definitely recommend you check it out and I'll put a link down below. So let's jump into it. Tuckable holsters are any holster that allows you to physically tuck your shirt in over the pistol so that there isn't anything that would indicate that you have a gun on. Now for me, it is going to be my Glock 19, and presently it is in this Dark Star Orion. Now, I'm going to kind of go top to bottom and give you an idea of what are the attributes you should be looking for in a good concealed holster because there's a few companies out there that make great ones, there's a bunch of companies out there that make mediocre ones. So, if you use this as kind of a shopping list, then that will better prepare you to kind of make the, the best decision. So when it comes to the holster body itself, um, there's a lot of good folks that are making Kydex. Tom over at Darkstar, obviously. Uh, John over at Filster. Spencer Keepers. Gabe at KSG Armory. Those are the ones that, uh, that I'm personally connected with. But I've heard great things about Holster Co., Henry Holsters, um, Boita Man, a few others. So there's a bunch of good foundations out there uh, when it comes to the actual shell. The nice thing is, is that as long as it doesn't, um, you know, as long as it doesn't collapse on you, as long as it's a decent grade Kydex, you'll be fine. That's probably the, the, the least critical piece of it, even though it's the foundation for everything else. There's a bunch of good options out there. It's the other little features that really make or break a quality tuckable holster. Uh, the nice thing is that most of this also applies just to any inside of the waistband. So even if you are not in a situation where you're running tucked in shirts all that often, most of this is still going to be germane to what you're looking for. Let's start with the wedge. Now the wedge is a piece that bolt either bolts onto the side or in the case of uh, Tenacore and some of the Filster products, it's physically, excuse me, not the Filster, the, the Keeper's products, it's molded into the body of the holster. And the idea is that when the belt is pulled across the face of the holster, it presses this into the body. So it's rotating the grip further in, which will definitely help reduce printing. Another thing that's going to help reduce printing is the length of the holster body. Even though I'm only running a Glock 19, it stops about there, this is a 34 length holster. Everything I've got is either 34 or 17 length for my Glocks because all of that extra real estate below the belt line, my belt is here. All of this extra real estate is pressing against my body because this is the heavy part. This is what wants to, to, to tip away. If you've got more mass down here, it presses in. And again, 
the idea is you want the pistol to do this in towards the body and then rotate because this is the part that always gives us away. So having a long body holster with a wedge are almost, I'm going to say musts. Uh, th those are really the two critical pieces. The wedge on the back is personal preference. Some people don't feel like they need to run it. I'm a fan. Uh, number one, from a comfort standpoint, because having this little squishy bit against some of my squishy bits makes it more manageable for extended periods of time. I've driven with this thing from Houston, Texas to Biloxi, Mississippi, which is about an eight and a half, nine hour drive once you factor in pit stops with no issue. Um, again, there are different options here. Most of them uh, are going to be some kind of Velcroed on pad after the fact. Tenacor and Filster have a molded in wedge in the body of the holster that uh, I thought was going to be uncomfortable, but when I got a Velo for my shield, it was surprisingly comfortable. The, the way they've got it designed is it doesn't feel like it's made of hard plastic. So um, your mileage may vary. That one's kind of dealer's choice. Here's the part that a lot of manufacturers fall short on is how the holster attaches to the waistline. Because up until, what, about maybe five-ish years ago, it was either an over-the-belt clip or two or some kind of pull-the-dot loop, but everything was still centric on attaching to the belt itself. The problem with that is that there is a visual signature on your belt that there is something there with nothing else to suggest it. And, and that's, that was my biggest issue is while people would kind of go, oh, well, you know, non-gun people don't know what it is. That's technically true, but here's the thing. They may not know what they're looking at, but they know it ain't right because you got some little fiddly bit on your belt with no explanation. The closest I ever saw this to being executed well was, I forget which holster manufacturer it was, it was one of the leather ones, and basically what they suggested was using their single leather pull-the-dot loop and hanging your keys off of it, so that that way it at least looked like a key ring. But without any context, somebody eventually is going to go, what's that? Especially if you're dressed like this and you're wearing a belt that is other than tactical black. So, the best solution to that, enter Discrete Carry Concepts. They have two different versions of this clip, the 2.1 and the 4.1. The only difference between them is the hole pattern, but the point ones specifically, you can see the tongue is a lot shorter. The reason for that is because they don't go over the belt. They go directly onto your pants and your belt goes over top of it. And so what that allows you to do is have virtually a zero visible signature waist carried holster. And so it is basically at this point, asterisk, more to come later, the only really discreet waistline carry option that I found, short of a belly band, but um, I, I don't have a lot of experience with them. The experience that I did, not super great because I've got a bit of a spare tire still. And so um, they always either want to move, either shift up or shift down or roll on me. So I don't know if I just never got a good one or what, but um, suffice to say my experience with belly bands, not super positive, but also not very extensive. So I kind of re reserve commentary on that. But these are the elements that you want to look for when it comes to a tuckable holster. Good shell, having some kind of wing or claw that cams the grip into your body. The longer the holster body you can get, the better. I know it seems counterintuitive, but I promise you it's going to be infinitely more comfortable. If you want to have a muzzle pad on there, it's definitely something worth playing with. And above all else, the discrete carry concepts clips are kind of the critical element to all of that. Just make sure when you're looking at holster bodies, you want one where the attachments are low on the holster. Now, the way Tom sets this up, you can do it either way. You can do it with kind of more of a, 
of a, of a you know, kind of a regular belt clip or a foamy clip, um, or you can do it with something that's tuckable. I like the versatility of it. So that's kind of the highlight reel of all of this. The only other thing is that setting up a tucked holster is kind of a pain in the ass, uh, which is why I generally avoid it whenever I'm doing kind of mechanical training. So if I'm going to a traditional shooting class, I'm not going to tuck my shirt in every single rep. Um, what I've found that's been reasonably successful is once you get the holster onto the belt line and you pull everything away, actually unzip your fly and you pull the shirt tail down that way. So that, that way you're kind of avoiding a little bit of the telltale bunching that can, uh, that can occur whenever you're running something like this because even with a tuckable clip, the hard stop point on it is higher than your shirt tail. So if you're not quite careful, uh, you can still have a whole lot of bunching over here that can draw some attention. But like I said, all in all, it's pretty damn successful. Um, you will have a little bit of an asymmetric profile at the hips because you've got something thicker here than you do here. Some people will run an offside mag carrier to help address that. Again, dealer's choice. Uh, if that's how you choose to rock it, cool, go for it. Um, I haven't seen it be a huge issue yet. Uh, so for me, it's kind of a, a non-starter. The other thing I'd like to point out is this is an extremely thin, slim fit dress shirt. You don't have to wear baggy clothing in order to conceal stuff properly. If this were any baggier, what would happen is when the fabric pulls and settles, let's see if I can kind of artificially create it here, it will want to settle on the shelf that's created by the grip. But given the fact that it's a relatively tailored fit, it's not overly tight, but there's enough tension in the fabric that when it drapes, it doesn't billow. So again, just kind of something to, to keep in mind that some of these things can be a little counterintuitive. Uh, hope you found it useful. One thing that I will address just because I'm sure it's going to come up at some point is why in these demos I am always using my training Glock as opposed to my actual carry gun. Uh, Short answer is because this, when it's not at the range, is almost always unloaded, and my carry gun obviously is always loaded. I don't feel like chambering and unchambering hollow points. Um, so, and also because this is a training gun, that is why it lacks iron sights. Uh, when I first started getting into the dot, I understood that a lot of people will cheat and use their iron sights as a reference, so I decided to short circuit that by just taking them off. Um, since it is a training gun, if the dot fails, it is in a consequence-free environment, so no harm, no foul for me. Anyways, hope you found this useful. I'm also going to link down to the article as well. Um, just kind of in no particular order, the holsters that I have had the most success with when it comes to tuckable configurations. Personally, uh, I've run a Keeper's Cornerstone. They're phenomenal. The only ding that I've got on them, and it is a temporary ding, is the fact that right now they don't have an optics compatible version. So uh, the cornerstone is only going to work if your carry gun is iron sights only. Obviously the Dark Star Orion is kind of my, my current one. Uh, I've got a little project in the works with Tom, so stay tuned for that. That's going to be fun. Um, but honestly, I'd, I'd recommend his gear even if that weren't the case. Uh, Tenacore, uh, I've got a Velo, as I mentioned, for the shield. I can only assume that the, the Velo is going to work great for larger guns as well. Gabe over at KSG Armory, uh, the Duelos, again, great, uh, great holster, nothing bad to say about it. Uh, it's perfectly modular for all of these needs as well. I uh, haven't run any of the inside the waistband products from Filster myself. I've had a chance to try a couple friends' floodlights, and especially for as big as they are, surprisingly comfortable. Uh, so the Pro and the Floodlight Spotlight series would be the tuckable variants uh, from Filster. So that's kind of the, the high level of that. 
Hope you got some mileage out of this. Like I said, I'll link the uh, I'll link the article down below as well. Check it out. Let me know what you think. And in the meantime, uh, go ahead and like us over on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, stay tuned. We've got some more fun stuff coming. Have a great week and stay safe.